Well, it's late at night and I'm still working on this project. And what I'm doing here at this stage is I'm hooking up all these carabiner clips to uh, hoochie cord or, or paracord technically. Um, I've got a number of these over here. Let's have a look. I've been making them slowly and clipping them all up here. These will be folding the top camp canvas down to the camper trailer. So I'm going to go over quickly just how I'm making them. <clears throat> so I've cut one of these here and I've heat treated the end so that all the central cords don't get loose. I'm looping over a little bit like this. I'm taking one of these and slotting over the top. Then we pull it back through around the outside and slide these two loops down. Once that's on, I then loop it back through again as a retaining knot, just so everything holds on. It holds up and that should hold nice and tight. And from the other end, we're going to do what's called a prusik hitch, but I'm going to do all them once I've finished tying the rest of these. And a prusik hitch is a sliding knot that you can slide up and it will hold that tension um, kind of in place of some other hardware. But anyway, I've got a whole bunch more of these to make. All right, <clears throat> so we're up to doing the tail end of these. And uh, this here is what you call a prusik hitch. Um, this is probably one of the handiest knots I've ever learned. It was a good mate of mine who's uh, quite an experienced I think he made it to a Venture Scout. <clears throat> anyway, the advantage of this is when you've got this knot, predictably you can pull on it with a great amount of force here. You can see me white knuckling here, and it won't move. But if you grab it in the right position, you can slide this knot up and then still retain that, or you can push it from the other side and shorten it up again. Very similar to what you can do with Dyneema rope. But this is great if you're in a pinch and you need to make tent ropes that you can adjust and tighten after the fact or even loosen. So we're going to go over how to tie this knot. <clears throat> so this might be a handy one. So for a start, I like with paracord, I get at least two widths of my hand plus a little bit on here for the loop. So I start with a loop around my hand and I come up here. So what we want to do is we want to start with two loops before. Actually, I'm going to lengthen this a little bit. So we start with two loops beforehand. So you start here, and then you go over the top of what you've just done, and you do two other loops, but careful to go one loop through here. In fact, um, where are we? I've got this backwards. So you see we're going over this one, under that one, and we're doing one loop and two loops. The idea being that both of these come out next to each other on the same side. Then take all of this and push it all together and pull the knot up tight. It's a bit of a trick you've got to get used to, but once it's tight it should stay there. Normally I'd leave a little bit more of a tail than that hanging out, but um, yep, so if we just get that nice and tight, we should end up with a knot that stays tight like that and we can still adjust it up and down. Now that has a number of other options, you can use that for to hang off here so you could intersect one rope down that way, it doesn't necessarily have to form a loop. Um, but from what I remember, that's called a prusik hitch. I could be wrong, but that's how I remember it in my head. So the idea here is to tie a whole bunch of these, and I've got a carabiner on the other end, so I hook that around the guide rope, the or, sorry, the, the lashing rope around the top of the canvas. And this will trail all the way back down to the loop on the trailer, and then I can pull it up and tighten it as need be. If I get up in the middle of the night, the wind's flapping, the roof's flying around, I just give all of them a bit of a tug and adjust them up. And then in the morning, I loosen them off, flip them off the loop, and I can take the roof off. So that should be my simple, stupid solution. And uh, more importantly, I can repeat that in the field, I can replace that. Same reason I've stand, stayed with a standard 6 foot by 8 foot tarp. I can buy them literally anywhere, and most materials in those multiples of lengths. So if I need to repair something in the field, I can easily find something. Alright, so here we go. A whole bunch of mucking around later. I've got the prusik hitches and lots of carabiner clips. And uh, I've got a few left over over here too. I had to buy two packs of ten. But anyway, 
We're looking good. So my landlord's been around and kindly started mowing the grass for me uh, because all those vibrations from lawn mowers are not great for MS and my legs. However, I can do the quiet job of painting now. Got ourselves a paint roller and some appropriately sort of green-ish paint. And uh, I've got the door roped shut uh, till my uh, the financial manager returns with some pad bolts for me. So yeah, we'll get painting. I think we might even have Tinker Man Mick join me. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what happens. Now, another little trick I'm doing, because it's so damn windy here, I'm using blue tack to hold my paint pan down to an off-cutter sheet so my paint pan doesn't blow away. And uh, so I've got a good visual reference of where not to walk. So I don't trip over it with my feet. Because yeah, house paint is nasty. And I'm using one of my old shirts here. So I don't get paint all over my good ones. In the truth, we find out what colour this is really going to be. You know what, that's not too bad. I've got my stirring stick here. I can't really do this one handed, uh, so I'm just going to jump to having done the paint job. Uh, unless Tinker Man Mick shows up, which we're not sure about yet, he'll probably be cameraman for me if that happens. Anyway, we're going to keep moving on. So I've got paint splatter all over me from the wind, but the ends are green now. And I've getting notifications as well. But in the meantime, I've got some touching up to do with hand brush. But we're pretty well done in that department. I might do some on the inside with the leftover paint. Alright. Everything's set up properly. Ticket Man Mick showed up to help out. Oh, wait, no. Apprentice, don't peel them up. Oh, she's trying to break things. I've got a few little paint bits to fix up. Uh, but I have the canvas on the roof. Everything's going well. It's relatively cool. We've obtained a ladder. We've got a latch on the door. Everybody's doing pretty well. So yeah, we'll do an outside view in a minute, but uh, I'm going to enjoy it inside for a minute. Alright, well it's still a bit windy, but we're going to do a walk around. Haven't quite got the hang of getting the canvas on yet. Um, I'll get that properly positioned soon enough, and you can see the lengths of the ropes I'll need to correct at some point. But, it's still functional. My apprentice is learning the ladder pretty quickly. We're going to put a little latch somewhere down here so that the ladder can't separate. But it's doing pretty well. We've got some paint. I've got a few touch-ups to do and I'm going to paint the inside and we've got to find that window. But uh, right now I'm going to go and find my handrail for climbing in and out. Well I took the liberty of adding a handrail which has already proved its worth being that my apprentice slipped on the way out earlier and she was hanging onto this handrail and saved her for some nasty falls. So the next job we've got is lighting. So I'm going to address this with some PVC sheet. People keep giving me this thinking it's acrylic and it cuts in the laser like the uh, proverbial. Um, let's lean in here out of the wind. So yeah, I'm going to try and fit this onto the back wall and cut a hole. Um, and then once that hole's cut, then I'll start painting the wall. And uh, hopefully we should be good. We'll have a window. So I'm inside, made some measurements, and uh, I've left a nice little generous border around here. So I can add some screws or glue or however I plan to put this in here. Now I'm going to take my battery grinder and I'm going to fill out the cuts for the most of this. And then I'll finish the rest off with a knife or something else like that. 3mm MDF is pretty easy to work with. Okay, we have a sizable window hole. Might even make a good substitute for a TV. But uh, yeah, now I'm thinking because this sheet I've got has got the original protective material on it, I might fit the window and then paint this wall. Although the sensible person would paint it first. Decisions, decisions. The lighting's a little horrible, but we've got fresh paint. And we're ready to paint the wall. I've got my apprentice on mayhem standby. She's going to cause some kind of mayhem, I'm sure. I've already got paint because of that. Anyway, let's get cracking. Well, you're doing a good job, sweetheart. Keep it up. Ah, that's really sharp. It's a bit hard to see again with the lighting, uh, but I've put three mil nuts and bolts with washers 
in here and it's time to peel the protective layer off. Now, there's still the layer on the outside. I don't know how scratched the PVC will be um, once I peel that off. But we're starting to peel all this stuff off. And uh, I'll be going back outside to put the remaining two screws in and um, peel the other layer off. But we'll have a window in here fairly shortly. Alright, we've got all the protective film off. I've got a bit of dust here that's stuck on by static cling. We'll cure that soon enough. But we've got a nice little impact resistant window. All the screws are in. I've got to think about what I'm doing next. I might be putting some lighting in. Alright, this might be all I've got energy for today. But I've swept the floor, picked up the thousands of tiny screws that I dropped. I've put the rubber matting in. I've got these little lights that I found and they can just magnet on and they're going to do the job. Um, I'll do that more permanently later. Painted the feature wall, I've put the window in, I've moved the straps up. The side effect of doing that means that when the wind hits this tarp, it's a bit buffered by this. It's not putting so much stress around the edge. A minor change I need to make, I need to shorten these hooks a bit because they're rubbing against the canvas which will eventually eat through it. I've got some cardboard up there. This one you can see here it's already doing that. Anyway before I was interrupted you can see that it's already rubbing on the canvas here so I'll need to do something in the short term to prevent damage on that. Um, canvas is still not on quite straight as you can tell by the normal wear marks here. Um, I've got to lengthen the ropes up and do a bit of mucking around with that. Um, I've drilled a hole through here with a rope so I can use for lifting. The original one that I drilled actually got covered up by the blocks for holding the bar in. But overall it's feeling a lot more stable and a lot more square. Um, I don't need this guide rope once it's all set up. It's going well. Handrail's in quite sturdy. So we're doing alright. Um, I've got one bed frame in here. I'm going to investigate canvas um, as a stretcher on this side, but I'm pretty sure uh, it might be too wide for the space we've got. But we'll, we'll look into it, see what we can do. Um, I have plans of mounting a TV here, but I've got to do my maths, and I've got to uh, give my kids some crazy pills apparently. Um, I'll be putting the TV here. I'll be uh, probably setting up some sort of power system and a folding shelf because we'll be using a CPAP machine in here. Um, my paint job is far from a perfect paint job as you'll see from all the dodgy borders. Um, the idea here was not so much to have a perfect paint job but was to cover up the ugly stain on here so that uh, my senior financial manager if you could call her that um, doesn't have to stare at something that looks ugly. Um, the green paint has met her approval, so I'm happy. I've still got to climb outside and tighten up a couple more screws here, but uh, that'll be about it for today. I think I'll be investigating some more stuff later. I'm pretty well exhausted. My legs aren't really working very well, so uh, that's a good sign I need to quit. All right, we'll be back again shortly. Right, so it's been about a week while I recover from the attack of MS, and I'm still not quite the same yet. Um, I found a little 12 watt winch I had kicking around, just a little 3,000 pound one, or at least that's what they say. Um, I've mounted it to the roof, uh, or the roof rack, um, of my Land Rover, and I've run the wireless system back down to my auxiliary battery. That means I have a winch with a wireless remote control. So I am going to use that to pull up my camper. Save a bit of effort. So, uh... Yeah, we'll see how we go with this. Um, I've busted a hinge on it, but I've got a lot more done since the last video, so keep going with that. And one day I might put a bit more paint on my antenna mount. Okay, we've taken the canvas off, and this is the whole unit in its packed up state. I have a hinge in that corner to fix, and I've got an apprentice eagerly awaiting the first test run of the winch. And as usual, I've come out to work on this and the wind has come up again and the rain's coming in. Beginning to not like outdoor work. In all, we're going to give it a try. 
I've only got a 15 amp fuse on this, so we'll see what happens. Let's go retract. I'm just doing, just doing a little bit at a time. Ah, it's going to work. And the door's popped open. But it is working nonetheless. Haha! I think this is going to work nicely. Haha! <laughs> Roof might get in the way, but we'll be good. Alright. Well. Right. well, I'm just in the process of packing things up and I noticed some missing paint here. Looks like my measurements were a little bit fine and uh, if we go around here, this piece here as it folds down is colliding with that and that's what's caused that hinge to uh, destroy itself. So I need to rework what I'm doing here. I'm using hinges for a bit of everything so I've got another idea that might avoid that problem. Okay, we're set up. We have no roof on, we're just roped on temporarily. We've got the hinge replaced on the hinge that's not doing a hinge thing. And uh, I've got to work out how to make mattresses for this. They are a little narrow, these beds. I don't know how we're going to go sleeping on them. But uh, anyway, I've done the measurements, so technically they're correct, but they could be a little military style. Anyway, I'm going to go around the back here and show you my temporary solution <laughs> for holding this up. Um, I'm thinking uh, that's going to have to be a second person when we do properly set this up. Anyway, it's time to pack it up again. Problem solved. Well, I probably do need to get some more solver paint to do this, hence where that phrase came from. But uh, it's yet another hinge, and the door's flapping in the wind, so I think it's time we lowered this down. So about three minutes later, everything's packed up into the uh, trailer, as it should be. The only thing we've got left to do is put the canvas back over the top. I'll give you a quick look at that, and that'll be the end of part two, because I've done about as much as I can, and the medication's wearing off. All right, and this is it packed up. You barely know it was in there. And uh, as for the winch wires, I'm going to put some more of this um, tubing, split tubing over it. I'll tuck it out of the way again at a later date. For now it's under cover. Um, I'll probably need to pull it out into the sun and let the battery charge up again anyway. And uh, I've got to trim some of this stuff off the top here and neaten everything up. There's also an extra loom for a manual switch that I've got to connect to that as well. But for the moment, it's getting too windy. I'm about to get wet, as you can probably see from... The skyline around here, this means you're going to get wet. So, uh, yep, this will be end of part three. Part, oh, no, part two, I think we're up to. Part three is going to focus on putting some fly screen on the air vents. And I realise I've got fiberglass stuff instead of the other stuff, but it'll do. And I've got this bit of tarp here. We'll be creating a little skirt to go over the air vents as well so we can close them up in the rain. But for now, I've got to go back inside. And uh, yeah, my legs are going numb, everything's happening. So I'll see you all in part three and hopefully this will be mostly finished. I'll have to get some beds sorted out. Anyway, catch us all in the next one.